Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Tired of trying to listen to your music through your phone's little speaker? Yeah, today you'll know how to create a wireless sound system. It's time for Know How, the show where we show how to do cool things. I, as actor, I'm Leo Laporte. The, uh, this time we're going to do... You, when we first talked about this, you and me, you said, well, w we're going to create a Sonos without actually paying all that money for Sonos. A wireless sound system. Something like that. That's, 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 that's the big goal of this project. But the thing is, I've had this constant problem. Like, I am, love listening to my music on my devices, right. and I want to go from room to room, because I work pretty much anywhere, living right. room or my, my office or whatever, but I want the audio to be louder. And I don't want to keep hooking up little, you know, little Or dongles. wearing headphones. I hate wearing headphones. It'd be nice to have in speakers house. in every room. I mean, you know, I remember the old days, people, if you were a fancy guy, you'd buy these built-in, uh, was it Crestron? Somebody made, you know, room in, multi-room systems that had speakers and they'd be embedded in the ceiling or the wall. And it was hugely expensive and it was wired. But once we got wireless capabilities, suddenly the idea that maybe I could just put speakers in every room and somehow wirelessly send music around. That's an exciting idea. Yeah, and there, there are a lot of different options out there, but the thing, again, like, I, I need You're to have... You're cheap. That's the thing. I'm cheap, and I, the Sonos is really expensive. It's, it is it's, really. It's outrageous. The expensive. lowest cost speaker, I think, is the Play 3, and it's about $400, but you, yeah, and but you still you need, need the bridge. That's one speaker, and yeah, exactly. So but we, we want to do better than that. We want to do something or like that. At least cheaper than that. So th I think what we should start off with is one of the oldest technologies that's been around. It's Bluetooth. Sure, and I've seen Bluetooth speakers that... You could just carry around with you. This is uh, this is one of them. I don't know what this. That is the outdoor tech turtle shell. Uh, this is a. <laughs> oh, really I cool saw this uh, on before you buy, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Liz introduced this to me. I thought it's a fantastic yeah. little speaker, and when it turns on, it makes that kind of scratching noise. Okay. And about Bluetooth, what you got to understand about Bluetooth is that it pairs, right? Now, what that means is you have one device talking to one speaker. Right. Now, this device can pair up to multiple devices. But it's not like you can have all the different audio sources talking to it at once. So one phone, one speaker. This one, in this case, can pair to multiple phones, but still only one gets to play at a time. Now, I guess you could carry the phone and the speaker around with you, and it would get the job done, right? Right. So, I mean, one of the, one of the cool things about Bluetooth in general is that you don't need, like, a crazy network or anything to make everything work. It's ad hoc, right? you got one device, one speaker. You can carry it around if you want to. So let me write Bluetooth as one of our yeah. solutions. There are some negatives to Bluetooth, though. It's only 30 feet. Right, it's got a it's got a range issue, and uh, I don't think the sound. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the sound is as good well, as it as a wired system would be. Absolutely, I, I totally agree with you yeah. on that. But the, I think it's A2DP. That's the new right. version of Bluetooth that does allow for stereo audio. It's a lot better than that old, you know, that one headset people used to wear all the time. That was all mono. Now it's stereo, and it's I, I think it's gotten a lot better. Yeah. Uh, and it also depends on what kind of speakers you get. This one from Outdoor Tech is about $100. I find that most of these, fine for voice, I use audiobooks this way, but music, it's kind of not much better than a radio. Maybe. Well, this one's pretty loud, so let's, let's test you it out. You want to try it? Should we yeah, play gonna, something on this? Uh, I'm going to try right on now. On this turtle, I think I turned it on. It's, it should yeah. be on. It's I've on turned on my blinking. iPad. I'm going to turn down the volume because it's going to be pretty uh, loud. Is it gonna, it's, I'll stand back. Yeah, let's kind of a new... So, oh, you know, that's, that is loud. Now, this device... And it sounds decent. It's got a good bass response. It's also waterproof, dustproof. Take it to the beach, in other words. Take it to the beach if you like to sing in the shower. It's good to have in the, in the bathroom. No, you can't put that in the shower. Not in the shower. I wouldn't put uh, it in the Right outside near the, shower. the shower. In fact, it's got a little hook, so you can hook, hook it on the wall just like that. And yeah. it also has, a, like, if you want to wire it, you do have the option on this side. There's uh -huh. a little mini jack port, and also it charges via USB, and it squawks it. Well, and that's another negative, uh, is that you have to charge this sucker up, and you might get uh, a day's worth of, b of battery life, but... 
it's kind of annoying also. It's like your phone, you gotta charge it up. And these place. portable versions, obviously you're not gonna get like great stereo separation. And so for me, in my house, I have an extra thing for my AVR and it's this device. This is a Bluetooth is receiver. It's a Bluetooth adapter. Oh, I never heard of this. So this you would hook up to speakers. Right, so this is 40 bucks. At least from Logitech. On, from Logitech. There are other alternatives out there from Belkin. I don't recommend those. They're cheaper. The audio quality is terrible. Logitech, its audio quality was really good. If you have an older set of speakers or an AVR a, a receiver sitting around, you could hook it up right into there. Now, it's not an amp. No. So you'd have to have powered speakers, right? right? Yeah, okay. You'd have to have powered speakers. Okay. Uh, you keep this plugged in. I mean, this is really about modifying your old existing speakers now, that you have and sitting the, around. And you still have that 30-foot limit. So mm -hmm. if you're in the room with this, I guess that's okay. Uh, could you put this in another room, walk into the room, and have it just kind of start playing? No, probably uh, not. I believe, probably have to I believe that actually depends on the device. iPad, okay. I know, automatically will switch off. Oh. It'll go right onto that okay. Bluetooth speaker when it's turned on. So this, if you, you, I mean, that would be one solution. Have a pair of powered speakers with this hooked up in every room, and then as you wander from room to room, the the music would follow. If, if you like doing that concept of like, it's just me, I'm going to go from room right. to room, I want to have this audio really loud, that's a viable solution now, to that. Now, there's one thing the Sonos does, which is really cool, which is party mode. I can have ah. the music playing in every room. You can't do that with this. Now, like I was saying, with paired, once that you got one speaker, one phone, one That's device, it. whatever it is, you can't send it out and broadcast it to multiple right. Bluetooth speakers, unfortunately. So let's move from Bluetooth to a much more common wireless technology. Almost everybody has, and that's uh, Wi-Fi. Right, so a, a network solution. There's always ways to do it via networking. So. That, that has much longer uh, throw. I can go 150 feet or more. Uh, sound quality can be better, too, because I have a lot more data going over the uh, Wi-Fi signal. If you've got a Wi-Fi connection, I think that's easy. I think, yeah, with Wi-Fi, you can do this, all, and also wired devices. So it's not just Wi-Fi, but if you want to wire, when you hook up, it'll be via your Wi-Fi network because your device will be wireless, right. sending it over. But the receiver doesn't have to be wireless. It could be wired. That sure. could be wired. If your router's nearby. Yes, yeah. yeah, so as long or as you, you can have... buy an Ethernet bridge from Wi-Fi. You could, yeah. One of those things are powerline networking. We, right. About network expansion, we can talk about that all day, actually. But, but we're gonna well, let's do Wi-Fi because I, I bet you most of the people watching have Wi-Fi. It seems like a logical way to do it. I'm gonna, by the way, mention that even though you configure Sonos with Wi-Fi, it's my understanding it uses its own proprietary wireless technology, not Wi-Fi. I can't understand why it would do that. I, I could, I, when, when I was trying to figure out this whole system, what, one of the things that happens is you have latency and then you uh -huh. have out of sync audio when you do do this multiple audio thing. So if you do party mode and you have speakers in every room, they're not gonna be in sync. Not necessarily. So that's the amazing thing about Sonos. It sounds like the whole house has come alive. Mm -hmm. so so that is an important point. Wi-Fi alone does have some latency issues. Yeah. But I guess you could have different songs on every and different speakers in every room. You right? could try to do that. I mean, yeah. it's kind of, it's pretty difficult to take one device and try to uh, send like <laughs> yeah. Pandora All to right, one. Forget and, we said that. So That's, anyway, this is why you spend a lot of money on a Sonos. It does some things. It's pretty hard to roll yourself. Well, let's talk about the implementation of Wi-Fi okay. uh, with your devices. Right now, there's a standard called DLNA, and that stands for things like Digital Life. What is it called? Digital Lifestyle or Living Silly. Network Alliance. It's some yes. thing I keep forgetting. Right, I'm going to write D-L-N-A. And that is a protocol that rides on top of a network. Well, it's actually a whole bunch of different things. So it uses oh, okay. UPnP. So that's a way for universal plug and play. So it automatically can, can pair up with devices. It can find the devices. Now, right. if you've ever done any networking at all in your home, the old days with your PCs, you're right. like, how come my laptop can't see my desktop? What's up with that? DLNA makes it a lot easier for your devices to see each other. It's automatic discovery. Right. And also, there's a bit of uh, quality of service stuff that's actually built into DLNA. That's good because that helps with that latency problem. Exactly. And when yeah. you're moving, because you can move more than audio, you can move right. video as well with DLNA. Yeah, I mean, the, the original idea, I think, with DLNA was something like Apple's AirPlay, where I'd be sitting on the couch with a device, I've got a DLNA enabled television, and I could say, send that picture from my uh, Android phone or my uh, uh, or my tablet to the screen and watch on the big screen. Yeah, right? DLNA is, I mean, AirPlay is like a version of DLNA. Yeah, it's kind of an Apple branded DLNA. Right, and the other thing is, if you have a Samsung device, they call it All Share. Because, like I was saying, when I'm trying to figure out what DLNA stands for, Digital Living Network Alliance, thank you, Vince, in the chat room. Uh, that's not a branding that anybody remembers. Because they're like, what does that mean? Yeah. When I first saw the, the Sony ads with their TVs that have DLNA, I didn't know what that meant. There was no real 
education when it comes to it. Now, I've used DLNA, and I have to say that it doesn't quite live up to the spec. I can see why Apple modified it a little bit. Maybe Samsung did too. Uh, pairing is sometimes funky and strange. Sometimes DLNA devices don't see the other DLNA device. I just, I've never been able to get it to work reliably. The, the handshaking between DLNA handshaking. devices sometimes can be a little iffy. Yeah. What I want to show though is how to set up uh, taking an Android device and send content via DLNA to what we're going to use is our Raspberry Pi Xbox Media Center. Whoa, wait a minute. So you've made this Xbox Media Center into a DLNA. But you should explain, DLNA is client-server kind of, so there's a sender and a receiver, right? Right, with all of this stuff we're talking about, sender and receiver. So, so the sender is what the content is living on, which is an iPad or uh, an Android device or even a computer, and then we send it to a receiver, which would be the uh, whatever is attached to the speakers, right? Yes. All right. Or so, TV, I guess, if you're sending video. Yeah, in this case, I want to show XBMC because these, if you have a bunch of Raspberry Pis, you could put them in I with, like this idea. With individual speakers. They're only 35 bucks. I know you can probably use another kind of piece of software instead of XBMC, but I already had that installed, and I think it's really powerful. Why not use that? You, in fact, you could go back to our Raspberry Pi episode and you demonstrate how to put XBMC. It's called Pi BMC or something like that. Uh, Rasp 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 BMC. Rasp BMC. And do all XBMC uh, uh, clients have DLNA built into them? They have UPnP, which is used by That's DLNA. That's all you need. Right. Okay. Uh, to, to be the, re the receiver. Good. Now, and also, don't forget that on the Raspberry Pi, there's an analog output for audio. So if you have an older pair of speakers, you don't have to worry. You don't have to like get an HDMI adapter right. to some kind of analog thing. It is mono, though. Uh, is, is it stereo output? I think it's stereo. Oh, cool. But okay. what I want to do, wow. though... For 35 bucks, I can... I, Still blows me away. It's an amazing can... machine, and yeah. you don't doesn't necessarily need to be just a computer. But this can... tells me you could use uh, a, a Xbox 360. You could use there's a lot of a boxy box. There's a lot of XBMC devices. You could there. yeah. There's a we're just using this as an example. Okay. You could, your TV probably has it built in. Right. A whole bunch of audio uh, video receivers. I know my receiver has DLNA built in. Uh, like I said, Samsung has their proprietary name. All share. You might be able to send something. So we've solved the receiver problem pretty good here. Uh, how about the sender? Where are we going to send our data from, and how do we get it to work with Actually, DLNA? before we get to the okay. sender, yeah. uh, we've got to go back to the XBMC to make sure how to turn on UPnP because it's not oh, on it's by, not default. by default. Yeah. You go into your Xbox Media Center settings. Okay. You're going to go into System. System. Settings. Yeah. Going to go all the way down to Services, and then you're going to find UPnP. You're going to turn these on. If you can see these little hey. buttons here are being turned on. Okay. I, li I like to turn on everything Announce there. library updates, allow control of XBMC via UPnP. And the other thing about XBMC, if, you, if you've noticed on the side here, it also does AirPlay. Wait so a minute, what? So we can also turn this on. It does on. AirPlay? XBMC can act as an AirPlay receiver. So we're I gonna thought you needed an Apple device. I thought you needed an I Apple TV or an iPhone or an iPad to do uh, AirPlay. So this is actually good news because Apple's AirPlay, I think, works just a little bit better than DLNA. We'll, we'll, we'll dive into a little bit more about AirPlay, but let's do, let's actually get some DLNA to work. Okay, yeah, that'd be a good okay? start, all right. So what we've got, we've got our Xbox Media Center over here as our Raspberry Pi. Okay. And I'm gonna connect it to a pair of $35 speakers. $35 for Raspberry Pi. It's gonna say this and pair a little technical know-how. <laughs> it's connected right there. That's a, that's a speaker? Yeah, okay. And, and wait a minute, now, how is this speaker connected okay. to your Raspberry Pi? Your Raspberry Pi. Okay, we got a Raspberry Pi now. That's ours, your Xbox Media Center. Xbox Media Center, we have it networked right now. Okay. If you wanted to use a, a Wi-Fi dongle, you could. Uh, we have an the, analog... The audio jack goes into the speakers. Analog output to the speaker. I notice we have an amp, too, because it has to be powered speakers. It right. can't be powered by the XBMC. This device is not going to power Pi. that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you got to have a separate power source, and obviously you would leave them all together. Okay. So this is actually set up to do DLNA. What so I that's need. our receiver. Mm -hmm. What are we going to send with? With our sender on Android and on iOS, there's an application called... Uh, Skifta, which is a, it's, it's made by Qualcomm and Athero, Atheros. Atheros, yeah. Thank you. They They're do... the chipset manufacturer for Wi-Fi. So okay, we... S K I F T A, Skifta. Now that's this is a free application that is a bit buggy on iOS. Badly but named. I pretty tell good. You <laughs> pretty good on Android. So how it works? If you could, let's see if I can get this on the screen here. Okay, so you choose your media source. And that's going to be our Nexus 7. And then you're going to choose a player. And in this case, it's our Xbox Media Center. And then we're going to pick our media to play. So it sees it. 
It automatically saw everything. It saw it. I just I jumped over that. Because it and by the way, we're on the same Wi-Fi network. That's critical. Absolutely critical. Yeah, okay. Because this is based on the network and this is Twit, so we have like 15 different networks. Right. So we're both on the same Wi-Fi network. Make sure they're all together on the same yeah. network. We're gonna find our music, which is on here. We're gonna play some music. Now this is gonna come out of the speakers. Behind you, so it might be playing loud. from the Nexus 7 to the wirelessly to the XPMC Raspberry Pi, and then the Raspberry Pi is gonna power these speakers, and in moments, music will come out. I sent it to the wrong Xbox Media Center, excuse <laughs> me. I sent it to my laptop. Sometimes you can have too many of these. Yeah, I mean, if we can see my laptop, you can actually see it. It's play. actually playing on your laptop, that's pretty funny. You yeah. see the little thing there? Let yeah. me send it to the proper one. That's the other okay. thing. You can do other things. Let's go back. Excuse me. So you are going to want to name your, your yes, different receivers. I hit, I hit Rumble by accident instead of my Raspberry Pi, okay. and I went out of it by accident. Let's do this again. Skifta. Every time it starts up, by the way, it does this little handshake. It finds everything. It says yeah. it's connecting to your network, and right yeah. now it's connecting to our network. So again, this is DLNA using XBMC. Mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi is the sender. I'm sorry, receiver. Receiver. The Nexus 7 is the sender using the Skifta software. So playing content directly from the Nexus 7 to okay. the XBMC Raspberry Pi to the speakers. And here we go, it's rocking. We got music from behind me, there it is. That's, that's working wirelessly from my device over the network to that speaker back and there. Actually, the quality is excellent. Yeah, because we're using Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth. There's we're going to have plenty of bandwidth. Yeah, higher quality audio. That's great. So the other thing, like I accidentally showed you, if you have multiple devices, you can send them to to different zones. So this would be one solution. It sure would be a lot less expensive than a Sonos is to have a Raspberry Pi running XBMC in every room with a speaker set up, mm -hmm. and then you can use a variety of devices as the sender, right? Yeah, because this works on Anything iOS that's and Android. That. Is there a desktop DLNA app? I well, I get uh, maybe I believe there was there are ways to do that. I okay. don't I don't have that right now Air off the top of my head. Airfoil or something like that. Actually, uh, Airfoil is Airfoil. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. Uh, All right. But like I was saying with DLNA though, this is also somewhat one-to-one, -one, okay? You can't just broadcast to all. This is going to be oh. sending to that XBMC, not to this XBMC. Right. So it's not a, a simultaneous playback. Well, we playback. even saw that happen, didn't we? Right. Yeah. It just, it yeah. Want one or the now, other. Now, I guess you could have the Raspberry Pi wired to a bunch of speakers, but we want to do this wired. Yeah, I mean, that's a little yeah. bit messy. So then we'll move on to Apple's AirPlay, okay. which I know people are freaking out right now. Why would we want to use AirPlay, right? It's got, oh, it's all Apple, right? No, it's not all Apple anymore. Uh, there's there are some great pieces of software available for Android that allows your Android device to be an AirPlay speaker. Wow, so if, I didn't know that. If, so if you're like Leo and you have like a hundred of these phones just lying this around. This is my old Galaxy S2. I uh, I kept forgetting to send it to, to Gazelle. So you run. What are you running on here? Okay, I'm using an application called iPlay. iPlay Audio. It is so now let's be very clear. Instead of being a sender, now this Android device is a receiver. This is taking the place of the Raspberry Pi to receive content, it could be from the Nexus 7, in fact, now, right? I, I, think so. I think so, we can, I'm, 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 we, there's we so many, many different ways. sources to, here. So All many right. sources, right, and my brain is spinning. Okay. Okay, so iPlay Audio is a $2 application. You can try it out for free. There's another application that I believe times out after about four or five days. Okay. So you can test it out and see how it works. Now, what you see on the screen, it says iPlay Audio. It starts automatically on your Android device. You can turn that off in the settings. Uh, but it says status, waiting for audio, start streaming for, from iTunes. So I can decide, okay, what, what do I want to send it from? Oh, that's interesting. So if you have an iTunes server running anywhere in the house, this could just pick it up directly. Right. So like right now, because of the setup we did. You're like, going to use your iPad you now? See my, you You're see crazy. The, you see You're the, crazy, man. <laughs> the Look amount, at all the different things you got there. Yeah, these. that's iPlay on the Nexus 7, iPlay on the SPHD710. That's actually this device. So that's what's cool about this is, is this allows... You could get a bunch of cheap Android devices, and one in each room, and then you could... Now, does this allow you to do multi-room audio, or could, do I have to... Can I, can I, it, unlike XBMC, can I send this to multiple rooms? It depends on your source. Okay. Now, AirPlay, from your iOS device, you can only do one-on-one. -on -one. One. Okay. If you have iTunes, you can change everything. Right. And we we'll talk, talk about AirFoil in a second, but why is this guy not working? That's why I have multiple devices running right now. <laughs> Just make sure that I get one of them to work. One might say the multiple devices make this more confusing, not less. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. <laughs> What's going on here? It's one of those days, there, is it? I, it looks like there's a lot of wires. There really aren't. You oh, have yeah. a source, a sender, which is not wired. It's connected to the network via Wi-Fi. It could be 
uh, an Android device or an iPad device. It could even be a computer, which we'll show you in a moment. The receiver is wirelessly sent to. In this case, we're going to use AirPlay. So we're going to use uh, old Android devices at our, as our receivers running this AirPlay uh, app, which is called again? This is called uh, iPlay. iPlay. iPlay Audio. So I should write this on here. So this is, a, this is a kind of a clever idea. And of course, your receiver could also be an Apple TV or any other AirPlay uh, device, but iPlay lets you AirPlay. So I guess AirPlay is kind of a standard that other companies can uh, create software to use. So right now I'm trying to send some audio over to our Nexus 7. Let's you, go ahead and do you that. You might also get better results uh, using AirPlay than DLNA if you want to do multi-room music. AirPlay does make some attempt to sync up the uh, Let's listen audio. to the Nexus 7. Let's see what happens. All right. Here. So <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> tell us the routing here. We're going to use the Nexus 7 as a sender. No, the Nexus 7 is going to receive the audio. <laughs> We're going to... Who's sending the audio, I ask? We're going to send the, the from, our, from our actual laptop this time. That's what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to use from a laptop as a sender. And what are we going to run? iTunes as the... Uh, that doesn't look like Right iTunes. now, we're going to use Airfoil. Because Airfoil. This I'm, is from Rogue Amoeba. This is a great little piece of software. Let's see. What's and this on? allows multiple rooms. This is much more like Sonos, right? Yes, this gives us a much more Sonos-like experience. Right. I want to find out why these guys are... Windows aren't. or Mac. Yes, and... and it times out after about 10 minutes. This is so you can try this for free, but only for 10 minutes, just to see if your network is working. This is, it actually says it's streaming audio. I just don't. Oh, give it up. <laughs> no, no, no. There it goes. Oh, I hear it. It's so, if you okay. can hear that, this is streaming. This is what's kind of cool about this. You can mix and match anyway. Yeah. So Airfoil is streaming from your laptop to your, what was the sender is now the receiver. The Galaxy uh, S2. Let me get this. It's and it's just running what? What is it running? iPlay? This is running iPlay Audio. So iPlay can send or receive. That's right. Now, iPlay Audio, like you've, you're seeing right now, it's a bit buggy, right? We're seeing that we're not running a great experience when it comes to our Android devices being our, our receiver. I found much better support with my XBMC, which I can just test right now. I'm just going to blast back there. You can also use iTunes, of course, to send to multi-rooms. Yes. Um, but if, yeah, so airfoil runs on. Well, I guess. As you're seeing right now. This now, is, okay. Now, how are you doing it? Okay, right now, using airfoil, sending it to my XBMC. Okay. My so airfoil. airfoil is playing to the XBMC media center, running on a Raspberry Pi connected up to this speaker. Right. So. Like, Holy camole. <laughs> Let's talk about Airfoil because there's more to Airfoil than just uh, sending audio to multiple things, okay? Airfoil costs $25 if you want to stream audio for more than 10 minutes. Okay. So if you want to just do it intermittently, you can test this out as long as you want. I'm in trial mode. Uh, like I said, iPlay seems to be a little bit buggy. Is that buggy. receiver only or is that can be that also send? Can this send audio? iPlay. Can iPlay no. send? No, it's a receiver. iPlay is a receiver okay. only. So I misstated that. I apologize. I okay. got that wrong. Okay. So the other thing about about Airfoil, yeah. not only do they have a desktop application that allows you to send audio yes. from whatever source. Now, if you go to my screen, you can see I have applications I can send out, Spotify, Safari, iTunes, oh, or I can send nice. out my entire system audio. So Airfoil is running in the background and will pick up audio from a variety of sources. That's what Rogue Amoeba does so well. They're right. very good at this kind now, of Now, this application is really powerful. So if you want to make sure that look, whatever you're listening to, Pandora, or you listen to something on a web page, or you're listening to something from a browser, or even your iTunes collection, whatever you want, it's going to play through Airfoil. Now, they also have a pair, they have a bunch of companion apps for Android, iOS, ah, Windows, to be a receiver, Mac and Linux. So Got if you it. have any of these boxes, if you have any of these devices, they can become speakers for, from, uh, for your Airfoil. Got some old touches lying around. You could put those on there, hook them up to some good speakers. You know what I love about this? Because Airfoil will take sound from any source. You can even, and I've done this with my kids, you can even hook up a microphone, turn on the speakers in their room and say, get up, it's time for school. <laughs> okay, so That's a good use of Airplay. So in this case, we have Air, the AirPlay speaker app on, on my iPad here. You can see that it actually says, this is, it's showing what's playing from Spotify. That's just got the album art. Right. I'm going to send audio from my laptop to this iOS device. And let's see how that goes. Let's see, I, it's called Starscream. I'm gonna hit this, I'm gonna hit play. And give it a second. I actually have multiple things going. Turn that off, turn that off. Now. Now what's going on? Okay, so okay, let me see if I can figure this out, because I see AirPlay, mm -hmm. uh, Airfoil. So we are running computer, uh, laptop running Airfoil, playing music, sending it to the iPad, which was receiving as an AirPlay receiver. 
Right. That's is what it running? Done. Is it running the Airfoil speakers app? It's running the Airfoil speakers app. You can't is, do that without the Airfoil speakers. Right. App. That's okay. a free application companion app, like you have the sender and receiver. So, <laughs> we've got that set up. Okay. Yes. That's, I know that's all crazy. Now we're gonna try to do multiple. Multiple speakers at the same time. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't do that. Things will explode and fall apart. I don't know. <laughs> so this is the multi-room sound we want to do. That's right. We okay. want to try multiple room audio at the same so time. Before you do this, like any good magician, yes. let's explain. <laughs> let's say what you're going to do. Your goal, should you succeed, yes. is to play a song on your laptop that will be sent via airfoil through the air and received in not one but two different places. That's right. Holy cow! That's what we're going to try to do right now. So we need a drum roll for this. <laughs> so, <laughs> on, on my display here, I'm going to set up a bunch of different areas that I'm going to send the audio to. So we're okay. going to turn on Starscream is my iPod there. XBMC is okay. here. We're going to turn up the audio. You just check the box, huh? You just check this box right here. Okay. You just turn it blue. It's going to connect. Make this it really is a nice do-it-yourself solution. Okay. Uh, and a lot less expensive than the Sonos. So okay, gonna, what? Oh, active. Hit Raspberry Pi is working. I hear the speaker. Okay, hang on a second. I'm gonna hit play. And as you can see on my screen, you can see the audio moving around. Okay, okay. I will vouch as the, uh, you've never, have we ever met before? No. No, never met you, sir. I will vouch there is music coming out of that speaker playing from that computer wirelessly. But now, let's get it to come out of another device. Okay, but it, what you'll notice right now though is they're slightly out of sync. Wait a minute, it's coming out of this device too. That's right. I'm gonna send it to everything they're at once. They're out of sync. Forget it, everything's gonna be sent to it right now. Because I have iPlay on these things, and I have... Let's turn on so this So you're going to send it to every device? Yeah, why not? No, let's... that's not possible. Let's do it anyway. Let's see. Where is this thing? i got to find my... I as actor, ladies and gentlemen. Going to make audio play everywhere. cat herder. So we got audio playing here. And one of the cool things about... So this speaker is playing. Yep. This speaker is playing. This speaker is playing. I no. don't even know what this is. This speaker, holy cow, everything's playing. Are they in sync? No. Not even close. OK. I'm hitting pause, and you can see right now the delay, how long it takes for everything to pick up what's going yeah. on. I'm just going to turn off the speakers because they're just annoying me at this point. I also don't want to get sued by the black keys. I had no idea who they were. All right. There we go. <laughs> okay, so. Yes. We used Airfoil to do yes. all of this. Then that was an Airplay solution, third-party Airplay solution, iPlay. Now we had it and running. Airf oh, Airfoil, not iPlay. Yeah, but Airfoil Airplay. running. Airfoil, okay. That's our sender. That's from Rogue Amoeba. Right. Okay. $25 if you want to buy it and you want to stream unlimited. 10 minutes uh, limit if you are using the trial version. Just try before you buy, that's good. It's definitely a real, it's, it's a really powerful piece of software. Hard to use? It's incredibly easy to use. Okay. It, they, it gives you this great list of everything it finds. And so, like, I was, I tried it on different devices. You saw it on iOS. It was running on XBMC and an Apple TV all at the same time because you can do this with... <laughs> this is a bit insane, but you can do this with Airfoil. I, I'm blown away, and I think we should stop right now. I think... Where could they find out everything that you just did? Yes, because you're going to want links. Because of all of these applications, I, I'm not going to be able to go play.google.com slash blah, blah, blah. Right. Go to twit.tv slash kh, because we have show notes and links. And you can watch the episode back and go, wait a second. How did he send this that way? How did this work? You can watch the video. It's available on demand. You can watch it in HD. You can listen to the audio if you want to. You can, the last week, we put Ubuntu Touch on a Nexus 7. It's a fun time. Uh, I don't think that you can make that a receiver now that I think no. about it. But anyway, everything's available right there. And also, we got a great, right now, a Google Plus community. It's doing really well. There is a way with VLC you could do that. Thank you for mentioning that. Now, VLC, yeah. now I know you guys are going to write in about this. This is very involved. Video think, land client. VLC, you can do multi multicasting, and then you can have receivers on each end, and you could probably have everything in sync. Yeah. But that would require a whole other episode. So we'll do it another episode. So this is how you do it with AirPlay or DLNA via Wi-Fi. And, you know, if you just have one speaker in one room, Bluetooth would be probably fine. Bluetooth works pretty well. Uh, know How is on every uh, Thursday at, uh, well, it depends when we get around to it, usually around 3 p.m. It's after iPad today. Right after That's iPad how it works. today. Like, it's 3 like, p.m. Right. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. You know, thereabouts, somewhere in there, 2300 UTC, something like that. 
Uh, but if you can't watch live, and we'd love it if you do, you can always go to the website, twitch.tv slash KH. And we put it on YouTube too, right? YouTube.com slash know how. That's right. Yeah. And, lots of and tell your friends, if, if somebody comes to you and says, you know, I, 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 just, I want a Sonos-like system, multi-room music system, but I just can't afford it. How, however could I do it? You just say, well, I could explain it because I know all about it. But it would be much easier for you to watch this video from IS and send them to YouTube.com slash know how. Or YouTube.com slash twit for other great shows. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And now that you know how to do a multi-room music system, go out and do it. We'll see you next time on Know How. Ha, ha, ha.